before I sit down, I do want to go ahead and introduce Craig to you. Uh, Craig and Mary are from, from Memphis area originally, and uh, a number of years ago felt God calling them to missions, and they left all to, to go. And uh, it's a wonderful story. I'm sure you're going to tell a little more of that, aren't you, Craig? I am now. You are now. Uh, but we're delighted to have you guys here and hope that you feel at home with us and uh, look forward to what you have to say. Well, good morning. Good morning. It is such a privilege to be with you this morning. You know, I'm glad that we arrived a little early and got a chance to kind of visit with, with some of you folks this morning. And uh, I just got to say, and, you know, we, we travel a lot and we speak at a lot of churches and we're always, you know, well received. But to feel like you're part of a family from the moment you walk in, um, that's something to be praised. So thank you very much for that. So we're very much at home. Um, my name is Craig DeLille. Um, I'm a missionary with South America Mission. I'm going to tell a little bit about kind of our story. We've been uh, serving in Brazil, in Recife, Brazil, for about 10 years uh, as a family. Um, in a previous life, while living in the Memphis area, I was an air traffic controller. You know, pursuing <laughs> that, that career, I did that for 18 years, raising our family here and, and pursuing what, what normal Americans pursue in life. But during that time, uh, Mary and I always served in the local church. Um, as a worship leader, I, I served for a number of years. Um, also with the youth group, we were sort of the high school youth group counselors for a number of years in several different churches. And throughout all that time, uh, we got involved in, in some local missions. We used to do a lot of group work camps every summer with our youth groups. Um, and then started getting involved in international missions, taking short-term mission trips. And the more that we were involved in that uh, in our lives and more we were serving the church, the more God was revealing to us that that's what he had in store for us for, uh, for the rest of our lives, for, for full, uh, full-time ministry. And so uh, about 13 years ago, Mary and I, as members of Faith Presbyterian Church over in Germantown, uh, Tennessee, went on a short-term mission trip to Recife, Brazil, and worked with a, a local orphanage there, a children's home. And um, we were already, the Lord was working on us, and we were searching our hearts for, for, for where he was calling us uh, permanently. And um, we were both on that trip, and he just opened our, our eyes and our hearts to the people of Brazil at that time. And so we came back to the States, and I spent a couple of years in Memphis Theological Seminary, kind of short my theological education for the mission field. And then in 2004, we sort of liquidated and moved off to Brazil and, and have been there serving the Lord ever since. So that's sort of just a, a brief uh, glimpse into, into how we got into, into the ministry in Brazil. Um, our ministries in Recife, Brazil, are what we call holistic in nature. And by that, what we mean is we meet physical as well as spiritual needs. Um, we serve the urban poor, of which there are many throughout Brazil. Recife is a city, metropolitan area, about four million people, um, and there are countless um, people living in abject poverty. And you've seen some of that on the video. What we'd like to do is show that video and not really sort of narrate it, just let you visualize what life is like in, in a setting like that. And I hope what you gather from, a, from watching a brief video of the ministries we're involved in is, uh, number one, we're involved in a lot of different types of ministries. Um, a lot of every aspect of people's lives needs to be restored to the Creator. And so we like to be involved in everything that people are about. And so uh, we do identify and meet needs, whether they be housing or food or education. We have a soccer ministry because that's a law in Brazil to have a soccer ministry. <laughs> <laughs> you got it? And I don't know why they think I'm going to teach them anything about, about their version of football because I'm not. But really what that's about is developing relationships. And so I hope what you see when you watch a video like that is we're about people and devel developing and building relationships with people, where they are, the things that they suffer with, the, th the things that, um, that they struggle with. And so we want to build those relationships up with people in everything that they're about. And so obviously um, any ministry has got to be about meeting that spiritual need, that restoration to the Father, that, that first and foremost, that relationship that we need to have so that our hearts are filled with his love and his mercy and his grace so that we can then begin to work on the relationships that we need, that need fixing down here, the horizontal relationships. And so that's, that's kind of what I want to talk about this morning because as we show videos and we talk about um, material needs that are being met, uh, for example, building homes for needy families or providing food for someone who has no food, those things are important things to do. Um, but if there's not a scriptural foundation for what we're about, 
then we're just about our own busy work. You know? And we can think of wonderful things to do, but it doesn't mean that's what God's calling us to do. We can do things in God's name, or we can do what God has called and already prepared for us to do. And so what I'd like to do this morning is talk briefly about a, a, a scriptural foundation for holistic ministry as a model. Um, you know, for many years, overseas missions was seen as evangelization and church planting. And we do those two things. Those things are important to do, but that's not the complete picture of what it means to, to have a, a human being restored completely and in right relationship with God in everything that we're about, in our everyday lives. And everything we do, everything we think about, everything we say needs to have a complete restoration. And so what I'd like to do is not preach on Matthew 28, the Great Commission, um, not preach on Matthew 25 even, um, which talks about Christ's second coming and the separation of the sheep and the goats. Um, and not preach about 1 John 3.17. If we have the resources and we see our neighbor in need and we don't do anything to help, then how can the love of God be in us? I'm sure if you've had missionaries preach, they've preached on those, those scriptures, and I have too, so I'm guilty of that too. Um, not even Micah 6.8, do justly love mercy and walk humbly with our Lord. What I want to talk about is the very beginning, the creation story from Genesis, and how from the very beginning God had a plan for how everything that he created in all the universe was to interact one with the other. And so what I'd like to do is begin with the Genesis, beginning in, in, in Genesis 1.26, the creation story tells us, then God said, let us make humankind in our image according to our likeness and let them have domin dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the air and over the cattle and over all the wild animals of the earth and over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. You know, God, at his very core, his nature is relational. God exists in, in triune form, Father, Son, and, and Holy Spirit. There's a relationship that goes on there. And everything that God created was to be in relationship with him and with one another. And so from the very beginning, this verse, God is creating a relationship between man and himself. We're created in his image and his likeness. What does that mean to us? We're created to be in relationship to him. When he looks down upon the earth and looks at us, he sees his image and his likeness in us. No matter how much we try oftentimes to mask that and hide that, he sees that. And that's what gives our lives value to him, his image and his likeness in us. And then in verse 27, so God created humankind in his image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. So now there's a relationship that he's creating amongst ourselves with others, male and female. And we're going to get to some other scriptures that talk specifically about family. But for now, we're going to talk about we're, we were created to be in relationship with one another. First and foremost with him and then with one another. And then in, in verse 28, he goes on to say, God blessed them. And God said to them, be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the air and over every living thing that moves upon the earth. Dominion. We were given a responsibility to exercise dominion over all of creation. He gave us a role to play here from the very beginning when he took chaos and brought order to the universe. He brought order to every one of these relationships that he created. And so here we're, we have a relationship with nature and a relationship and a responsibility to care for the things that God has provided for us in every sense of the word. So if we move quickly to, to chapter 2 and verse 15, another relationship that God creates when he says, the Lord God took the man and put him in the Garden of Eden to till it and keep it. So now there's a relationship with work. We are to toil. We are to take care of the... the, the the, the resources that God has provided to us. And there's a proper and a right way to do that, a way that's pleasing to God to view our work. You know, I was an air traffic controller for 18 years, and I didn't always view that career in a way that was pleasing to God. Sometimes it was hard to get up and go to work. Sometimes I wanted to call in sick when I wasn't sick. Sometimes I wanted to do things with my... That's not pleasing to God. That's not the right way to look at that job that he gave to me. And I, I think we can all... Uh, relate to that. So chapter 2, verse 17, God says, the word of the Lord says, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, you shall not eat, for in the day that you eat of it, you shall die. What is God give, giving us a sense of there, a relationship, a, a sense of, our, of, of morality? 
a sense of understanding right and wrong, that we are required to obey God. There are moral absolutes in this world. And so he has created that idea for us, that we are to do things that are right and pleasing to God and avoid things that are wrong and not pleasing to God. And we have a responsibility to play in that. Now, I can go on and on with the, the relationship with ourselves in, internally. I have a relationship with myself that I need to behave in a way when I'm all alone with my own thoughts that, that's pleasing to God. And I have a relationship with my wife and my children. I have a relationship with my neighbors. I have a relationship with my enemies around the world. And, and there's a way to, to live that's pleasing to God. Now, why are all these things important? Because when sin entered the world, when we rejected these relationships that God had created for us and the way that we were supposed to live and take care of the earth and the way that we were supposed to view all of the, these relationships, the, the relationship that was damaged wasn't just our vertical relationship between God and man. That's first and foremost. We separated ourselves from God. And when that happened, we could no longer see the world through God's eyes. We could no longer function correctly in all these other horizontal relationships that he has entrusted to us. And so when sin entered the world, it separated God, the creator, from all of his creation. Because first and foremost, he created us in his image and his likeness to exercise dominion over the rest of creation that he created for us to care for. And so, you know, Romans 8.22 says that the whole universe moans as if in the pangs of childbirth to be restored to the king, to the creator. So our sin has separated all of creation, and not just us vertically with God, this relationship, but all other relationships. We are incapable of behaving in a manner that is pleasing to God because sin has entered the world and broken that first relationship, that most important relationship. And so when we begin with that foundational understanding of how all of creation is separated from the creator because of our sin, then we begin to see in the New Testament, then we can talk about Matthew 25 and talk about what, what Jesus is saying, that he's, he's teaching us through all scriptures how to restore these relationships. So, so we can go to, to, to Matthew 25, which, which talks about the, separating the sheep from the goats, and he's saying, I will know those who belong to me because they'll be doing things that I've called them to do. They'll be caring for people in need. For I was hungry, and you gave me to, something to eat, and I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink, and I was naked, and you clothed me. That's all about restoring the relationships that were damaged and distorted because of the fall. And so what happens when we begin to look at, at the New Testament and, and what Christ has called us to be, we see that it's about restoring all of these relationships. And so holistic ministry seeks to do that. That's why we're involved in soccer ministry. That's why we're involved in a music ministry. That's why we're involved in what appear to be secular activities to many people. Because the reality is there is no such thing as secular and sacred. They're all sacred to God. He created everything. That's a man-made invention that there are things we can separate from God and do for ourselves that belong to society and are secular in nature. They all belong to God. He created everything from start to finish. And so holistic ministry tries to get involved in every aspect of people's lives. But we can say, first and foremost, you need a personal relationship with God. You need to, you need to understand uh, your need for repentance, for salvation, and for a right relationship with God. And that's the beginning. And that's that vertical relationship that needs to be restored, first and foremost. But it doesn't end there. Once that happens, the second phase or stage is that we begin to, to develop a biblical worldview once again. Once we're personally, individually in right relationship with God, then we begin to see the world through God's eyes. We begin to see our neighbors in a different light. We begin to see our wife and our children in, in a different light. We begin to see our family and the way that we view work and all those relationships that he created from the very beginning. We begin to see those with what's called a biblical worldview, a way of looking at the world the way God looks at the world. Once we can do that, then the Holy Spirit, through our obedience to the Lord, can begin to restore those relationships in all their splendor and the perfect form that God created them from the beginning. And so when we talk about evangelizing and we talk about church planning, that's an important aspect of any ministry. But when we talk about sitting in someone's living room, when they have no food in their cupboard, and they don't know how they're going to feed their children or how they're going to get them to school the next day 
or how long the rainy season is going to last or all the daily struggles that they deal with just trying to survive. And I tell them God loves them, but he's not sent anything to help them out through that day. I have a hard time getting that message across. Because words are cheap. But when I say, God loves you so much that he's raised up people half, from halfway around the world, people from this very church who care about you and pray for you and, and don't want to see you suffer because they have the compassion that God has for you in their hearts as well. And so they don't want to see your children go hungry. And so they're providing some, to some of your needs, but also they're coming alongside you as a, as, a, as a friend, as a brother and a sister in Christ, and they want to be in relationship with you. And sometimes we don't have all the answers. Sometimes we can't meet all the needs of the people. But the goal is not to eliminate poverty. The goal is to alleviate suffering as a demonstration of God's love. And so I hope, and I realize when you, when you show a video that's nine minutes long and there's a lot of different stuff going on, it's hard to kind of capture everything. It's probably one or two images that you're thinking, I want to ask a question about that. <laughs> when, the, when the service is over, I want to know why that guy has a hole in his side. And I want to know about the Indians, you know. I understand that, and it's, it's, you know, 10 years of ministry is hard to encapsulate in, in a brief video, but I hope what you saw in that video um, was the care for people. I can't watch that video and not get emotional because I see so many people that I care so much about, and I know what God has done in their lives, and I know what he's going to continue to do, um, and the Lord doesn't need me to do that. He has given me and given our family the privilege of being involved in ministry that reaches out to people who are in what appear to be hopeless situations and bring hope. And so that's, that's what holistic ministry um, is about. It's about restoring a spiritual relationship with the Father, helping them to develop a biblical worldview, seeing the world through God's eyes, and then third, beginning to restore all those broken relationships that were damaged by the fall as well. That, that's what completes the picture of what it means to be a part of the kingdom of God. Have you counted how many times Jesus preached the gospel of salvation versus how many times Jesus preached the gospel of the kingdom of God? Because they're not the same thing. Salvation is very specific. That, that we have sinned, we've fallen short of the glory of God, and we, we cannot do anything to save ourselves, that Christ died on the cross for our sins, and if we accept Him as our Lord and Savior, and, and, and we repent of our sinful behavior, and we humbly seek the Lord, that He has paid that penalty for those sins, and we can be in right relationship with God. Jesus often preached the kingdom of God because the kingdom of God is a complete restoration. It's not just the spiritual component. The kingdom of God exists where his will is being done all the time. You know, when, when the uh, disciples asked Jesus to teach them how to pray, he said, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Those phrases are synonymous. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. The kingdom of God is complete in heaven because his will is always done. The kingdom of God exists here on earth, but it is incomplete because we don't always do his will. The more that we do his will here on earth, the more that his kingdom is manifest here amongst us. And the kingdom of God equals complete restoration of these relationships. The more that we see our neighbor the way that God sees them and the needs that they have and reach out to them in his name, the more we deal with our, with our own uh, shortcomings and failures the, the, the more we deal with our relationships with our spouses and our, and our children in a way that's pleasing to God because we see them the way that God sees them. When you walk down the street in downtown Memphis and every person that you see, and you see a homeless person on the street, do you, is your first thought, that's a child of God right there. I see God's image and likeness in that person. This is not a judgment, folks. This is, this is all of us dealing with and struggling with that issue. How do we see the world? Because I tell you, the 7 billion people and counting around the world, God sees them all the same way. Sees every single one of them the same way. From the poorest in Africa to, to Bill Gates, 
whoever's the richest in the world, I don't know. <laughs> Every single one a miserable sinner in need of grace. And if we can begin to see the world the way that God sees the world, then missions becomes natural. You know, I remember, actually more than once, oftentimes when people ask us, one of the ministries we were involved in from the very beginning was, was home building because we saw a really great need of people living in homes made of plastic and mud, and, and they were dangerous living conditions. And the Lord touched our hearts to build homes for these families and to include them in the process. And, and, and the people ask, well, how did you decide to do that? And I said, I, I didn't decide. I couldn't see the need, call myself a Christian missionary and not want to try to do something to help. I hope it's, it's a part of who I am, that, that God's love and God's compassion pours into me so that it can overflow and pour out of me. And so people don't see me, they see the Lord. They see Christ reaching out to them in need. And so holistic ministry becomes a, a natural part of, of the church. It's our role to play. From the very beginning, God created us to, to be in right relationship one with another in every sense of the word. And so in order to restore those relationships, we, we are to be involved in, in every aspect of life, in restoring those to, to, to manners that are pleasing to God. Um, that's what holistic ministry uh, is about. Uh, that's the, the vision that God has given us for our work in Brazil. Um, I thank you for the opportunity to share that with you. Uh, I get excited, and I could talk for hours about it. Um, I won't do that this morning because I know we have other things to do. But um, I want to thank you for the opportunity to share with you um, not just a missions presentation, but a, a biblical and a scriptural foundation for the work that we do and the passion that God has given us for that. Thank you for your obvious love for us from the, from the moment we walked in here. Let's pray together. Holy, precious, and loving Father, we thank you so much, Lord, first and foremost for you, for your love for us, for the fact that you have reached your hand out to us, that you have pursued us, that uh, you have been honest with us, Lord, that you have told us what we need to do, what must be done so that we can be in relationship with you, Lord. We love you so much. We don't deserve to be uh, in this relationship that you saw to it through the sacrifice of your son that we have this opportunity. For that, we thank you. Lord, we pray that uh, you fill our hearts and our minds um, with your, your ideas and your, your words and that you give us the courage and the strength to live out our lives every single day in every aspect in ways that are pleasing to you. And in all those things, we give you glory. We give you 